Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the lovely Helen Peterson. Helen is the owner of Happy Seal Yoga based on the beautiful North Yorkshire coast in the UK. During this inspiring episode, we explored how Helen's journey to improve her surfing led her to yoga and rippled out to create a community that now works together to care for and also enjoy the beautiful North Yorkshire coastline she calls home. We discussed how yoga can provide both a physical and perhaps more importantly, a mentally supportive route to recovery after serious injury and that even if you can't touch your own toes you shouldn't be put off trying yoga. Lastly we pondered how our own perspectives in life can lead us to becoming blinkered and taking for granted the beauty that's just around the corner on our own doorsteps. Hello Helen and um, thank you so much for joining us in conversation today. I think it would be great if we just start off maybe with you telling us a little bit about what nature means to you and perhaps how it's been part of your journey through your life so far. Sure, hi, it's, uh, thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, so I kind of grew up um, in Teesside and I grew up sort of in the 70s, early 80s when we just all played outside rather than being on screen. So I just spent um, you just knock on your friend's door, you're coming out to play. We'd be building dens, climbing trees, all that sort of thing. And my parents, they used to take me and my brothers hiking every weekend. So every weekend we'd go up on the North York Moors and do a big day hike with a packed lunch. And they kind of got me into exploring, I think. And then we'd always go camping for holidays. So it was all very much up in the moors. We'd get the Lake District, Scotland, all that stuff. Oh, and amazing. I just loved it. And I've loved it ever since. Um, and then uh, both my grandparents, my dad's side lived in Sunderland near Roker Beach and then my mum's side lived uh, near Scarborough so whenever we visited them we'd go to the beach and that's kind of where I fell in love with the beach um, so yeah I just love being outside and I don't think there's any weather where you can't be outside you just have to have the right gear on and then like yeah I just we've had snow recently haven't we and I'm just like a little kid in a toy shop <laughs> I know it's um it, it's amazing I think um we've we've got lots of snow as well it's been on the ground for almost a week now and it's um I, you just don't lose that sort of magical wonder, do you? It's so, you, it just brings really out the don't. child in you, doesn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Like, I built a snowman. I'm on 49 and I still <laughs> built a snowman. <laughs> And I, oh, so, do, so did we we're, we're 40 as well we were like Monday morning we're like yeah we shovel, shoveled a bit of paths and things and then we're like yeah, let's build absolutely. a snowman so. it's got to be done and especially because I live near the coast it's rare that we get snow that sticks around it might snow and then it's gone in an hour so it's been really nice to have it around for a week yeah yeah it's it's um it's just like you say it's just lovely to be outside I think and um I, I think that was one of the things I loved about what you did with your yoga was the fact that all year round. I mean, I've seen one of your videos of you um, getting getting kitted up for winter sunrise <laughs> yoga at the beach. And um, is, it is, like you said, it's just that you have the right clothes and you can get out and enjoy nature all year round. This, this is it. I think when I originally started doing my yoga by the sea, I was thinking I'd probably just do it in the summer. But then we kind of got nearer to the end of the year and no one wanted to stop. So I was like, well, no, we just keep going and it's just put all your layers on. And I've done ski season, so I've got loads of thermals in the cupboard left over from that. So I've got plenty of layers to put on. And it is, you just wrap up warm. Like last Sunday, it was minus one when we did our class, but we still had a lovely yeah. time. You're still connecting with nature and it's just connecting with it in a different temperature. It's, it's fab. And you, do you find that um, doing yoga outside adds something to your practice that um you don't experience just being indoors I think so definitely yeah I, like you, I started my, personally doing yoga indoors just like everyone else I used to go to a gym and do it there and I loved it um and then I think I went to Morocco for a surf yoga camp and that's when I kind of really fell in love with it because I the, the shala for the yoga was on the roof and you were looking oh, wow. over the sea and just the sound of the sea uh, and then where we do it locally you've got the birds tweeting it's just amazing and occasionally not not very often but we occasionally get dolphins swim by and that's just a whole other experience oh wow that would be amazing that yeah. would be absolutely, <laughs> absolutely amazing and I know um because the name of your business is happy seal yoga isn't it so um I, I guess um 
obviously you don't want to disturb the seals but they've they've been an inspiration as well yeah definitely we've got a a local colony up near us um and that's so all my pictures come from that colony but I've got a massive zoom lens because I don't you don't want to disturb them and it's really sad when they get disturbed but so but they're just amazing they just haul out there this huge colony um and they just always so seem to be so happy I hope they are yeah (laughs) <laughs> they um I mean we're quite we're quite spoiled in this country aren't we because um you've got the grey seals up by you as well haven't you We've got um, both the grey seals and the common seals yeah Yeah and um and they're actually quite um the grey seals are quite endangered aren't they they're um They are yeah Yeah we've got um quite a lot what is it sort of is it around like 40% we've, of the world We've got the most of, we've got the majority of the population yeah. in this country which is amazing yeah, it's um, rare that think... we've got one of those. We, we normally travel to see the, the amazing wildlife, and you kind of take for granted what you've got on your doorstep, don't you? Yeah, well, you do. Well, I mean, I spent quite a lot of my time in Africa, so um, and then I have oh. over the last sort of decade been like actually trying to take more, um, pay more attention to the amazing wildlife that we have got on our shores yeah. here. Absolutely, and, it is, and you, you do take it for granted. Like I went out early morning yesterday because I was like, I knew it was snowing. I knew there's a chance there was snow on the beach, so and I get to walk down through the woods to get to my beach. Uh, and if you just stand still, the wildlife forget that you're there, don't they? And all these birds are coming around, like dancing around me, and there's a couple of deer trotting past. It's just it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's it it is it's beautiful, isn't it? And it's um, I think that's one of the things about I love about lo- uh, doing yoga as well is just it encourages you to get comfortable in stillness doesn't it and uh, yeah definitely I, I think that's the best thing about yoga is you, you get comfortable you take that time where you can be still whether it's for 45 minutes an hour an hour and a half however long it is and if you're doing it outside you, I think it helps you kind of connect with yourself that little bit more because we always start our classes just by taking in the beautiful view we've got and then listening to the sounds we can hear and just slowly bringing ourselves inward and yeah I think it's amazing yeah I think it's um our modern society we're so we have so many demands on our time don't we now I mean I I think like you said growing up in the the sort of 70s early 80s I was was only a little bit behind you and I mean I just it's just sometimes I get overwhelmed just by what I think has changed in our lifetime which is such a short isn't it I I was thinking earlier like I did a class this year and it was 38 degrees in Whitby and I remember traveling like in my early 20s and I was in Australia working in the outback and it was like high 40s and I was like oh I'll never experience temperatures like this again and then this year we've had it in, in North Yorkshire which is <laughs> and now we're plunged and, into snow <laughs> and it's just like, what's going on and yeah and just the way technology's changed like if you, if you go back to your younger self and say oh you'll be you'll be carrying this screen around with you permanently attached to your hand <laughs> I'd be like what <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, some of them, not don't get me wrong. I, you know, some of it is is brilliant, like the fact that we're here now. You Absolutely, know, um, we can see each other, and it, you know, the connections around the world have been amazing. But yeah, it's it's just it's a huge change, and I think that's why I love things like yoga because it does give you that space to just step back from it a little bit more. Absolutely, and, and just to slow down because I think we're we're like on the go all the time and there's a sort of like this pressure to to do more and be more and it's just you need to just take a rest yeah and, and yeah definitely bring it back a little I think and um you, uh, you you said that you're you love um being outdoors and camping and things and you've done ski seasons um but I, th- I know you also you do a lot of sort of beach cleans and things don't you with yeah, so I'm, I'm an ambassador for Planet Patrol. Um, so we run a yoga beach clean every month in the summer. Um, and it's what I like about Planet Patrol, talking about technology, is they've got an app. So it's not just about picking up the litter, it's, it's logging the litter as well. And then they can analyse it over the year and take that to um, higher levels to try and make change. So they're really big on getting that plastic bag ban in place and, and all sorts of stuff like that so I think it's really important to, to and it's really important just to do something to give something back isn't it just this is like it can be overwhelming that whole climate change thing isn't it so and you're like what can I do I can do one little thing okay I'll do that little thing and that'll make a small difference yeah and that I mean that sounds brilliant um planet patrol because like you say it's, it's on two levels then isn't it so you feel like you're doing something because you're actually actively out there 
collecting litter, making like you you immediately see a change, don't yeah, you? It's like absolutely. You your can little see, oh, bit there of was beaches. rubbish there, and now yeah. it's clean again. Yeah. And um, <laughs> but at the same time, actually feeding that information back is a bit of a sort of citizen science project. Um, yeah, absolutely. Emphasis yeah. that then they're using to campaign for change on a, a more sort of corporation global level. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you, you can feel good twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, I think you, you touched a little bit there that it does feel overwhelming, and I think sometimes we feel we don't know where to start, do we? And and actually, it's great to have people like you who've who've used your where you're based with your yoga, and you've sort of evolve that to to help the environment as well and have an active little community where pe- other people can sort of gravitate towards you and... yeah yeah I just think like you can just you can do something but if you can just do a little bit to give something back I think good if you do a bit of good good comes back to you and if you just I, I think that's a good philosophy to have in mind yeah yeah it's 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 really important I think it's um and I think it it gives you a little bit of hope as well, doesn't it? That yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You... And, it, and it is, and it, like we're saying, if you just do little things, you can be like, okay, well, I've done a little thing. <laughs> and if everyone does a little thing, yeah, then well, that... they become much bigger things. Well, that's it. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not quite sure what the uh, the UK population is now, but we're you know, <laughs> like yeah, like sixty, got like 60 million, million or something. something like that, yeah. yeah, and it's like if we. <laughs> If we all used one less plastic bag, suddenly we, exactly. we've saved 60 million plastic bags, haven't we? Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it's it's important to remember that, isn't it? Um, Definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was a couple of years ago, I was like, what can I do to reduce my plastic consumption? So I decided to go to um, soap, bar, bar shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> it was horrible for the first time few months I tried loads of different ones and my hair was really greasy I was like oh what am I doing is this really worth it but then I found one that worked and it was just like oh, okay this yeah. is cool I've got it now so I've stuck with that but it, it's just a tiny little thing but I've no longer been using plastic bottles for shampoo and conditioner it is really hard isn't it I think um and I think that's maybe something that puts people off is it it seems it's it takes trial and error when you're yeah. using like more sort of natural ingredients and things. They exactly. don't react in the way that we've become accustomed. So we, That's you know, it, yeah. to us, like clean means, you know, a big head of lava. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and, you, and you just don't get that, do you? And no, but, exactly. yeah, so it's it's a lot about perception as well, isn't it? What we've mm. become accustomed yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. What what you're being almost brainwashed into believing is, is how it should be. But, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Do you do you find like um I think you're also for your yoga you um you sort of looked out like more eco friendly um yoga equipment and things like that, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. So um whenever I'm buying stuff for me to use for my clients, I use a, a company called Ecotext, which is it's a local business in Edinburgh and they're all sort of ethically and ecologically sound as far as I can tell. So yeah, and so I I think that's really important to do that because there's so much you could just go and get the cheapest one but it's just another like dodgy bit of plastic going back at the end of the day so yeah if you can do what you can to to make it better but yeah it can be overwhelming all these choices currently and then there's a lot of people jumping on the, the green washing thing like oh I'm green but yeah, you're like are it, you and then there's the research you've got to do to find out whether it is or not yeah it, it is it is really it's really hard isn't it because you on the surface I mean all decisions uh I think that's we have to just make the best decision we can with the information we have at the time Absolutely. Don't we? yeah yeah and not worry if you got it wrong <laughs> yeah. like if you made it yeah. in the in the right um with the right intentions I think yeah and I think I think everything everything's on a scale isn't it and I think you know if you can move up the scale a little bit you know so you know yeah, just you're, creep your way up there little by yeah, little yeah <laughs> exactly I mean if it, it's sort of you know five ten percent little increments and they do add up they do make a difference and um, you do a bit of surfing I believe as well don't you <laughs> I do a little bit of surfing yeah I try I think is what I always say I've been surfing a really long time and you can't tell that when you look at the <laughs> surfing but I do love it I was surfing on um I think it was Tuesday this week and obviously it's freezing cold but once you're in the water it's just another experience you just it's an, it's another way of connecting with nature and I love it is you just clear your head when you're out in the sea and then when you catch a wave it's a really good rush yeah and I guess 
it must be a completely different perspective out on the water as well it is completely like you you have got you're surrounded by the water and you see the land from a different viewpoint as well and I, I love that viewpoint from being out at sea so um, I also with my yoga I do stand up paddleboard yoga as well in the summer and that I love giving people the experience of experience that view from the sea when you're out on the paddleboard yeah I think it I, kind of changes your perspective on life as well doesn't it when you definitely and it's it's so much quieter out there as well like because you're away from the traffic even if you're just a little bit off off the shore you're away from the traffic and the noise and the hustle and bustle so just everything just seems much calmer instantly yeah oh it's, it sounds amazing <laughs> I'm, I'm getting I'm like sounding yeah well I, I mean there is something special about the ocean isn't it I think it's just um if you're lucky enough to live near it it's um amazing yeah. It is, it is proven to help with people's mental health. I, I'm also, I volunteer for a, a WAVE project, which is a surf therapy charity, and they work with kids and give them the opportunity to surf. Uh, and you just see the difference in the children from when they start a six-week block to the end of a six-week block, the confidence they get from being out in the sea and getting out of their comfort zone. That's just amazing in itself. Oh, that sounds fascinating. How did you come to get involved with that? Um, so... I used to work for the RNLI as a lifeguard supervisor and one of my colleagues, um, he went to become the regional coordinator for Wave Project. So I kind of heard about it through him um, and then it just sounded amazing. So I volunteered. Just, I've just been volunteering with them for a year, but yeah, it's a fun thing to do. It's, um, I think it's important as well to give children that opportunity to connect with nature as well. Yeah, it? absolutely. When they may not necessarily have had the opportunity. So it gives them that opportunity to experience the, the sea in a way that they maybe never have before. Um, and like I said before, they're, they're going beyond their comfort zone. And when they see that they can, that confidence that they get from it is, is pretty special. Well, and um, I think in terms of like conservation and things like you can serve and you want to help and protect the things that you love as well. So by Definitely. giving them that experience of of what the yeah. ocean is. Yeah, you're um, hopefully encouraging them to care for it in the future. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I mean, although I mean, my my sort of feeling is that I think um a lot of the younger generation are quite concerned about the environment already. Um Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, for them they're like they can see that oh this is going to get even like we've seen how much it's changed in our lifetime and they're just at the start of their life so they're oh if it's changed that much in their lifetime what's it going to happen in ours so you can see that they're understandably concerned yeah yeah and I think I think that's the thing isn't it there's there's definitely um from our point of view as well as a um, responsibility um to them as well for their future yeah, and not just completely. Our own. yeah we've only got a limited time with this planet so we should look after it and pass it on to the next generation I think it's key isn't it um do you pick up a huge amount of litter when you do your we're actually really fortunate in that it's it's not too bad if you we there's certain pockets where you'll get a lot uh, and yeah. it tends to be mainly be plastic bottles that's the biggest thing we collect but there's all sorts of stuff as well <laughs> we've had candles <laughs> wellies um so it it depends on depends on which part of time in the summer it is how many how many tourists have been in and what time of day i've done it as well so if it's later in the day there's obviously a lot more um but our local councils are quite good they have litter pickers working throughout the day as well as, yeah. and there's a lot of other um local charities that litter pick as well so it's, it's not just me out there there's, there's like lots yeah. of local beach sweeps happening so there's a lot of community here that really care about keeping those beaches clean which is really nice and then and so do you find a lot of it is sort of more onshore waste that's left rather than you're getting washed up yeah definitely it's, the, it's, it's yeah. stuff from people's picnics and uh, and just all sorts yeah it's generally sweet wrappers plastic bottles it's it's stuff that people haven't managed to take back to the bin I mean we do get stuff washed in off the shore like random like lots of fishing tackle and stuff but yeah okay. it's generally it's generally stuff related to humans not having taken their rubbish home 
Yeah. Oh, well, that, so that's quite good. So you're sort of basically on the ground level of it and you're by what you're doing is actually stopping it getting out into the ocean environment. Yeah, that's that's the hope. Yeah. Going exactly. around the world and then <laughs> exactly building up that because we've seen yeah. that thing where there's, there's just oh, like a tidal stream of litter. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hor- yes, it's quite horrific to see isn't that, it? isn't it? Um, this yeah. massive uh, litter island out in yeah. the middle of nowhere. Um, I mean, do you do you see as well um, on when you with your seal colony and things, do you see much inf- uh, impact on them from like litter and, and fishing tackle or is it? Our colony is quite remote. So I haven't seen that so much from the fishing tackle, but I have seen more effect from disturbance. I think from the pandemic, yeah. people were, because there wasn't much to do, people were then visiting the seals more and people who weren't necessarily, hadn't been educated, but they're, they're really great once they realised it was happening. Um, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's the Wildlife Trust, I don't know who it is, but there's volunteers in there and they're at the top before you go down and they're at the bottom and they're educating people to not go near them, which is cool. So that, that work is being done to protect them, which is so really do you, reassuring. Do you have, um, is it a breeding colony that you've got by you there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that you have the pups. Um, I guess yeah, it's sort of yeah. this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. so we get pups both because we've got the two types of seals. We get pups now and we get pups in June, July as well. Oh, wow. So, Oh wow! So yeah, it's so quite um, important yeah. um, throughout the year to to put to yeah. check them and yeah. yeah, make sure they're not disturbed. Because I, I definitely can. I I don't go very often to take photos. I'll just go and take one <laughs> massive load and then I'll use and reuse. So I'd taken some sort of twenty eighteen, and then I went back. I think. 2021 and that you could see that there was noticeably less seals there which was really sad yeah hopefully they will get going again yeah no it's it's um it is it is very difficult I mean I'm a wildlife photographer so um I do I do know that unfortunately um our industry (laughs) there is a a vast range of of people and experience and yeah and a lot of people sadly don't understand that actually the a lot of gonna have. Yeah, um, yeah and how easy it is I mean just I think I think there's some there's some great posters isn't there and an awareness that's been drawn but basically if a seal is like looking at you then you've disturbed it it's as, exactly as, as yeah. simple as yeah. that um, yeah. it's not a question of it moving <laughs> it's actually just the fact that if it's looked up at you then it's yeah. concerned about your presence exactly yeah 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 uh, um but I I because we've got grey seals down in Norfolk and um and she when I saw your the name of your business happy seal <laughs> yoga um it reminded me of of going to see them and um they look like they're sort of doing yoga poses quite, they quite do, a lot they, don't they? they really do like they're just always stretching and just oh I just reach up here with my fingers and I'll go here yeah I love them they're great <laughs> They're amazing. They're amazing animals. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I like to think of them as the Labradors of the sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. They are, aren't they? That's a great. Yeah. That's a great image. They've got that kind of like happy just, go lucky. Yeah. Definitely. Just just having fun. <laughs> so you're um in terms of yoga. Did you? How did you get into yoga? Did you find it? Have you done it all your life or did you? No, have- no, I, I found it late. So I kind of, I, I found surfing late. And then because of surfing, I was like, oh, I'm not really very flexible. So I've done, a, I've, I've done sport all my life. So I've done a lot of sport, but not, not the good things that will keep you doing sports. I haven't done much strength and flexibility. So uh, I kind of fell into yoga to try and help. Um, improve my surfing get my flexibility better I remember the first class I went to I didn't know what was going on I was just at the back of the class just giggling away with my friend I was like what are we doing <laughs> <laughs> um and, but I obviously liked it because I kept going back and it wasn't until I I went to that surf camp in Morocco where we were doing yoga twice a day so we'd, we'd do yoga in the morning we'd surf all day and then we'd do a yin class in the evening and before that I'd only been maybe doing yoga once a week and that really got me into it. And I just noticed the change you could have in a week from doing yoga, just both mm-hmm. mentally and physically. It was, yeah, great. And I didn't really think about teaching until much later, about 2018. I thought, oh, I could actually do this. <laughs> so I went to India and trained as a yoga teacher in India, which was amazing. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Think, uh, 
a couple of months over there and yeah and just came back and I wasn't sure I was actually I just went to do the teacher training because I just wanted to get more into the yoga I wasn't sure whether I'd actually teach and then when I came back I just started teaching in one class and then I was like oh, oh, oh and I enjoyed it and I was just like I get an opportunity to be outside still um be in the place I love and teach yoga at the same time share that really special thing and you and you share it with other surfers as well I believe don't you some of the some of your yeah so um I work with a, another um same guy who does the wave project he's um a local surf coach so we often work together and do um surf sirens so we'll he'll we'll do coaching and a bit of yoga in there as well uh, and I've also done surf yoga days with the local surf school down at Caton Bay as well so yeah <laughs> I think um because that's a big misconception about yoga isn't it is that you have to be flexible like I know cause I- oh it's just <laughs> like, it's the biggest thing that people say oh, I can't do yoga I'm not flexible I was like no it's not the point that's why you need to <laughs> do yoga it's a byproduct <laughs> of doing it yeah <laughs> Like you don't something... you don't start as flexible you yeah, exactly. yeah you work on it and, uh... yeah completely yeah I, 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 it's the most common reason you get for not doing it and you're just like oh no come and do it you need it that's why you should do it yeah and well, what would you say to to people to encourage them to consider yoga I think it's just there's so many benefits from it everyone always just think of it, it's about flexibility but it's it's that chance like we said to, to take a bit of time for yourself to be still uh, to connect with your body and become more aware of what you can and can't do um, like I'm not the most flexible yoga teacher and there's some, some poses I can't do and I'm, I'm happy to admit that it's I'm not one of them insta yogis that can just look up into handstand and do whatever it, but that's because I'm aware of my body and I know what I can and can't do. I'm not as young as I once was. So it develops that great body awareness, really calms your mind. I think that the mental benefits of it are, are as important, if not more important, than all the physical benefits. But it really improves your strength as well. Like I'm stronger than I ever was because of yoga. Yeah, I think um, I've... I did a lot of Pilates and then um, actually came to yoga after having quite a bad ankle injury. Um, I sort of um, strained and tore everything and managed to end up with my <coughs> Achilles heel uh, tendon sort of um, healing shortened as well. And um I was like, what can I do? Because <laughs> I can, I could barely yeah. walk. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do anything like hugely active. And um, and yoga, yeah, it just it has that that lovely element of you don't you. It looks like you're not almost doing very much at times. I think particularly you you said you you touched on like yin yoga, and I think that's a lot of like holding, isn't it? Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. But actually, the amount of difference in like flexibility and strength and it's just if you're having a bad day as well or anything it's just you know even if you just do a couple of poses and then just sort of sit yeah. on your mat and, you know it just it gives you to quiet your mind doesn't it and definitely it quiets that mind and I, I've nodded along all through what you've just been saying there because I had knee injuries like that's why I stopped doing ski season especially if I, I had quite bad knee injuries and it was yoga that, that got me through that because I've, I've always been sporty so having that inability to run I was told I wasn't allowed to run anymore and I was like oh my god what am I gonna yeah. do <laughs> and so I, it, I just kind of really got more hard, and more into the yoga it? yeah it's really yeah, hard yeah. to adjust your mindset when you've, you've lived your life a certain way and then and to do it a different way I mean I do run again now but not like I used to and yeah it's yeah it, it does just give you that and it is even if you just do a couple like five minutes a day just like you say that little time on the mat just to just feel how you're feeling and sit with that and then yeah I, I when you touched on like you know physical like I I was like you I was really active I you know I've run marathons I climbed Kilimanjaro and then yeah. there I was like on crutches for like six months and I just it's the toll it took actually on me mentally I think was yeah almost harder than physically I um, think it's 100% harder isn't it yeah I, and, I can remember walking down the street and being overtaken by people who were like in their 70s 80s I was just like what's wrong with me I can't can't keep up with normal people well you don't you you lose trust in your own body as well Mm. don't you you're sort of like you know I remember used to because I've got horses and I'd be like 
oh, can I, will I be able to get out of the way quick enough? And, you know, just simple things yeah. like stepping backwards would be like, is my, is my ankle going to give way? And yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, totally. It's like stairs. I don't, I don't trust stairs anymore. <laughs> I think, even though I've been well you Hang on the railing. Still, I'm still walking downstairs going, will my legs do this? Yeah. All right, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and you do that sort of one shuffle, like one step, bring the other foot, one yeah, step, bring totally. the other foot. <laughs> yeah, completely. Oh, it's, it's a weird world, isn't it, when you yeah. have to adjust your body and get used to it again. But but like you, I mean, just yoga has just been transformative, I think, for, for my body. I mean, I think there were times when I was like, am I going to be able to run again? And, you know, without that sort of moment's hesitation of like, oh my god can I run it was and, <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah totally it's like the, I remember the first time I went out because I hadn't like I had surgery and the surgeon said don't run again it's not worth it and but then my mental health was suffering because I wasn't running so I went back to my doctor and said do I really never have to run? can I really never run again he's like no if it's gonna affect your mental health go run it's fine yeah. um so I remember that first run out and you're just like, oh, I'm not sure if I can do this or not. But then it's just learning to trust your body again. Uh, yeah. That's a bow in itself, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, I think it is, it is a huge battle. And I think that's something that we, we have in everything we see in the environment as well, don't we? Of, of like learning to trust our own instinct is quite important as well. Yeah. Like, you know, when we were talking about making decisions and, you know, you can get, sort of bogged down in that research cycle can't you yeah absolutely and then never make a decision yeah (laughs) because you're like oh I don't know if it's the right one so I'm just not going to make one that's safer yeah Yeah. and then (laughs) then you miss out because you're not doing anything and it's it's like actually just taking that first step and yeah and doing a little leap of faith yeah yeah if you wanted to um encourage people to get involved in yoga you've never done anything before do you is it best do you think to go to a class or I mean there's some you do you you do online classes as well don't you actually I used to do online because I'm not doing them at the moment like I obviously with the pandemic everything went online so it was just like that big learning curve of what's this zoom thing I've never heard of it before (laughs) and god what we're doing and a massive learning curve but yeah so I did online throughout the pandemic like the and then but then since we went outside this spring um pretty much most people were back outside so I, I stopped doing online then so I'm not doing it at the moment um but yeah just find a class locally um, um a lot of teachers will put on beginners courses like I'm doing a beginners course in January for six weeks at the local Buddhist center which is an indoor class but it just because going outside maybe if you've never done it before a lot of people have come to me who've never done it before outside and that's great but some people might be a bit conscious so if you are then go join a, a beginners class and learn the basics it's yeah yeah it's, it's, and just um, give it a go yeah don't worry about don't worry about what you look like <laughs> don't worry what anyone else is doing in the class it's yeah. not about that it's about how it feels yeah no that that's the, that's the thing isn't it I think it's um it is a bit daunting isn't it especially if you have this preconception that everyone's like these flexible yoga super bendy <laughs> <laughs> yoga goddesses and... leg around the head <laughs> really not like that and you're like I can't <laughs> no, my touch my toes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's it there's there's modifications for everything you can do so you can, there's different options not modifications different options you can do for any pose so there you can find your way into it yeah. you're the good teacher yeah for yeah. sure yeah, you touched a little bit earlier about your ski seasons I mean that's a completely different environment isn't it the mountains and yeah oh I basically, I don't know where it came from. Like when I was little, I was obsessed with skiing. I think it was from Ski Sunday, watching Ski Sunday, because no one in my family skis or didn't <laughs> then. I made them all learn. Um, and I was just like obsessed with going skiing. And I think my parents thought it was just a phase that said, oh, when you get to senior school, you can go on a school trip. And they thought I'd forget about it. And I got skiing. Senior school, I was like, I want to go skiing. You promised I could go. <laughs> so, so they let me go on the school trip. And then but the school trip was fairly raucous. So then they were like, we'll go on family holidays from now yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> then they all came along too and I just I loved it like those family holidays were fab and I used to always go skiing with the we, we had ski les- lessons to start with and then there'd always be back then you could have ski guide and I'd go skiing with the ski guide and I was like I want to be the ski guide when I grow up so I was just obsessed with it and it's just as soon as I finished uni I traveled for a year and then I was while I was traveling I was like right I'm going to start doing ski seasons and I thought I'd just do one <laughs> and then I was addicted 
<laughs> and I carried on doing it for I think I did 12 altogether in the end oh wow um, wow yeah, so, so quite a big things. big part of your life then huge for... part of my life yeah. yeah I kind of did it in two chunks I did six seasons when I was in my 20s and then I came back in my late 30s and did another six then as well and I used to do ski seasons in the summer and not ski seasons in the winter and I used to lifeguard on the beaches in the summer so oh, wow, I was, okay. uh, living the best of both worlds oh wow that's yeah that's quite amazing so and and in the mountains do you do you have a similar experience of nature to out in the ocean do you think or completely yeah it's it's completely different but it's as amazing like there's nothing like being especially if you've, you've hiked up out of the ski area to like an even higher point and you're just stood on the top of a mountain and there's only you and your mates that have hiked up there that it, again it's that quietness once you've got away from the hustle and bustle of everyone that's skiing on the piece is just amazing and the, the views are phenomenal like you can take a million pictures and you can never get that view that you see yeah. with your own eyes just, yeah that, oh. it's I think it's it's the sort of peripheral vision isn't it that sort of yeah. all-encompassing it's just mountains as far as the eye can see yeah uh, yeah and Funny. it's yeah you just you you kind of feel immersed in it in a way don't you in a way that you don't really get in the sort of more urbanized environment completely um it's it's just I think and as well I think snow makes everything look so clean (laughs) so it just looks pristine like it, it doesn't look like there's anything going wrong here because it's just covered in this beautiful white landscape um yeah it's stunning yeah yeah it's it's um it it is beautiful i mean the snow we've got at the moment is it is a mate it is just it just transforms the world doesn't it i mean it's like literally... it really does yeah it's just it's like everywhere become narnia yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and um and it it just i don't know it sort of gives you a clarity i suppose doesn't it of um perception as well i mean you start noticing like the trees and but definitely yeah. it's it's like even like as the day changes like say there's been a heavy snowfall overnight so all the trees are laden with like like a foot of fresh snow and then maybe it warms up during the day and the, and the snow starts to slowly fall off the trees as you move so you just get those different sounds just from the snow <laughs> yeah and um and I guess in the mountains as well there's the sort of um the respect for it as well from the the risk of avalanches and and things that mother nature is a, a powerful force all powerful force absolutely yeah you, you never know you can prepare as much as you want but you never know what's going to happen on any given day um, and it's that's it's always about safety first but you know that there is that element of risk involved yeah and um i guess there's a the sort of cleaner air as well isn't there and just the freshness and yeah just a it's just, a, I mean, the mount. I think both of both of the places that you're drawn to, for the mountains and the ocean, just have a real, uh, a special quality about them, don't they? That are quite, I guess, I suppose, sort of healing, really, aren't they? To uh, yeah, I think you're right, and I think it's like what you picked on with the air, especially in the mountains, the crispness of the air, and also because you're so high up, there's there's less oxygen in the air, so it's almost like you get a different sensation because you are at altitude. Um, and it is it, it is healing I think you're right that's a great way to look at it it's, yeah again yeah. you you feel very small in this beautiful big world and it just gives you perspective I think yeah yeah because I, th- I think a lot of um and that comes back to yoga again doesn't it of a lot of what we get in our heads don't we and things get on top of us they feel like they're insurmountable and um time in in nature and and like doing yoga and things they help to get us out of our heads a little bit and get that perspective that bigger picture um view of life um definitely I think you can over you kind of we're all very busy in our minds aren't we all the time you're overthinking 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 and if you can just get out into nature wherever it is and I, we got a really good lesson in school actually we were I'm, I'm, I'm gonna if I mentioned I grew up in Teesside which is affectionately known as smoggy land it's yes. so not necessarily renowned for its nature but I remember being in a geography lesson and they they brought up all these slides of pictures and we had to say whether they were Cleveland which was what Teesside was called at the time or Cornwall, Devon, Scotland, the Lake District 
And anytime it was a beautiful picture, we all put down it was one of the other places. And whenever it was an industrial <laughs> wasteland or chemical plant, we put down it was Cleveland. And then at the end of the lesson, they were like, they were all Cleveland. Oh, wow. Oh, and that's we quite like, powerful. Oh, wow. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's like, you, you, because you've been brought up to think that where you live isn't beautiful, you presume it's not, but there is beauty around the corner wherever you look. Yeah, I think that, that that's really that's a really powerful. Yeah, oh gosh, just, and it stayed with me. Like that yeah. must have been a lesson when I was like thirteen, something like that. But it, it's so true, though, isn't it? Is that you know we do we become blinkered. I think that's that's mm. it, isn't it? We become blinkered yeah. in our perception of of where we are, and where we live. Um, I mean, I know we're in a little village in Hertfordshire and actually most people don't even know the village exists and we're not remote we're sort of you know five miles from a very big town yeah. and <laughs> and but you'll say people will say where are you from and and you tell them and they're like oh I've never heard of that and you're like well yeah. it's literally just like <laughs> 10 minutes drive for you and you'd be there and it's like this yeah. It is. It's like Narnia. It's like going through the wardrobe, and suddenly yeah. you're in this different Ooh. world. And Completely. yeah, and but it's that is really that's a really powerful thing is to actually just I don't know what's the word like the beginner's mindset, isn't it? That curiosity, yeah. that natural yeah. childlike, actually start looking around you and and yeah. realizing and I think that was one of the only benefits of, of the initial lockdown, like when you were only allowed out for an hour. And it brought back that whole, well, I'm, I'm used to this walk, but I need a different walk. <laughs> so I'm going to go explore. And you'd be like, I had like five minutes from my house and I didn't know this little place existed. Okay. So, yeah. It, yeah, it was, I mean, it was amazing even now in our little village, like the amount of people that lived in our village that didn't even get out and enjoy it. And mm -hmm. they were like, you know, the sort of, it was almost revolutionary for them this like they're like oh wow this is on my doorstep and it's like I've been watching Netflix well, like, or something yeah, totally. <laughs> these... and I think also like before the lockdown if you didn't have a dog and you went out for a walk like and it, it wasn't like to go hiking people were like what are you doing yeah yeah, yeah get, whereas it, it kind of it's normalized it now so you see people out for a walk and it's yeah like, good. <laughs> no I, I think it's um Again, it's perception, isn't it, as well? It's like people are a bit like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, are people going to think I'm a bit strange? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, and it's fear, isn't it? Fear gets in our way a lot of the time. Definitely. Of, um, Worrying what other people think. It's like, well, how much life have we wasted doing that? Yeah, yeah. When definitely. most of the time they're worrying about what other people think as well. So like... <laughs> but, well that's the... That's the that's the sad thing about it, isn't it? Is actually when you realise like most people actually aren't worrying about you at all. They'll no, unless, all. They're, unless they're unless they're worrying about, about what, you're what you're thinking, thinking. about them. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. And once yeah. you get that, you're like, oh god, what have I been worrying about all this time? Yeah, and it, that's very freeing, though, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that that's um, I think that's that's something that we can take through in life isn't it is actually and it relates to the environment as well is just do doing what you feel is right for you and trying to you know as long as you have you come from your heart and you're not causing damage or hurting others um just trusting yourself yeah I think that's that's so so true trust trust yourself and and do what feels right yeah. And hopefully what you feel is right is right yeah, and then and, you can't go wrong and then um, it is just getting in touch with yourself and I think that's I, that's why I loved your your journey with yoga as well is <laughs> just and and taking that into the environment and in all the different ways that you do from practicing out there but also you know bringing in doing your beach cleans and inspiring others by teaching children it's it's fantastic um how I mean, it's amazing, really, actually, when you think about it. I don't know if you do think about it, but like the ripple effect that you yeah, you have don't had. think about it. I don't think, and you, and then you saying that you're like, oh wow, I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah, but, it, but I think that's what's really powerful is like you know you're you're sort of like you know a lovely, beautiful, humble person, and you've you've just been on your own journey, and you came to yoga because you wanted to surf a little bit better, but actually you've. <laughs> created this lovely little community around you and that you've inspired and 
yeah make, you're making a difference it's amazing and I think that that word community I think that's what it's all about if you can create a nice community that's what I love about teaching yoga is the community of people who come to my classes they're amazing and it's been like a privilege to meet them all and share yoga with them I think during covid and lockdown i think that was something that became really apparent to a lot of people wasn't it It was actually when we were cut off from everyone actually that's that sense of community is really important and finding like-minded individuals and and you can amplify your you know together you can do so much like you know when you go on a beach clean you can there's only so much you can pick up but if you have another person with you you pick up a bit more if there's 10 of you actually you sort of inspire each other to to do even more and absolutely and the more people that you're doing it with the more people see you doing it and they're like oh I could do that too and like you say it's that ripple effect oh oh well it's been amazing talking to you Helen um I think that sounds like a lovely place to start to wrap up but I don't know do you have anything else that you feel that you would love to share with people about your journey or connecting with nature any wisdom on your heart (laughs) I don't think so I think it is just get out there whenever you can it whatever the weather just get out there because it is amazing and I think community is at heart of everything so yeah thank you so much for chatting to me today it's a pleasure and uh, and uh, if anyone's looking for any tips on how to be prepared for winter (laughs) <laughs> Helen's got a great video on her Instagram <laughs> of exactly how to layer up like a true professional. <laughs> I went out for our wife project Christmas meal the other night and everyone was like, How many layers are you wearing? How many layers are you wearing? It's like, oh, I forgot that was out there. <laughs> No, but it, it's important, I think, for, for people who perhaps haven't had that opportunity to to get out, you know, particularly if you've had more of an urban experience upbringing life um you know you don't you don't know how absolutely to... and it's just like simple things like tucking in twice <laughs> the double tuck makes all the difference yeah. of all don't leave any skin exposed <laughs> <laughs> oh well perfect well thank you so much Helen and um no worries it's, thank it's you it's been lovely to have this little conversation with you exploring all the different environments that have influenced your life and um <laughs> Yeah, thank oh, thanks so, so much. much and uh, hopefully one day you'll make out to Scarborough and you can uh, yeah, come and join me for yoga. I'd love to, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> that'd be brilliant. Thanks so much, Helen. No, worries. thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.